ESXi ransomware. Does that get our attention as administrators? It should. I'm gonna show you guys today how easy it is to create ESXi ransomware, even if you're not a developer, even if you're not a programmer, by simply using built-in commands that are found natively in ESXi. Stick around, let's see what we're talking about. Attackers are increasingly targeting VMware ESXi simply due to the blast radius. Why go after a handful of servers when you can essentially go after the mother load of business critical data in one fell swoop? And that's what they're doing. One of the alarming things to me in looking at many of these threat posts, it started to occur to me that many of the commands needed to encrypt your business critical data running on an ESXi server are natively found in VMware ESXi. And it underscores the importance of preventing those attackers from gaining access using an SSH prompt or a shell prompt uh, to allow themselves to run various administrative commands, especially if they are able to access your ESXi server using the root account. Only a few steps stand in between an attacker and your business critical data in your VMware vSphere environment, especially if an attacker has a foothold in your network. Most likely they are going to infiltrate the network like many other ransomware attacks. They're going to compromise a workstation via a malicious application, a phishing email, or some other means. Once they are there, if they have especially line of sight access to your ESXi servers, and especially servers with SSH access enabled, it's only a matter of time before they are able to compromise uh, access to your ESXi servers. What happens once they have access to SSH? It, at that point, unfortunately, is game over. I wanna show you guys just how easy it is using built-in tools to begin the encryption process on your business critical virtual machines. First of all, I wanted to show you guys the simple vSphere cluster that I have running in the lab environment. So I have a four node vSAN cluster with a couple of test VMs that we're going to take a look at, specifically test VM one. One of the first things that an attacker is going to do is they are going to power off virtual machines that are running on that ESXi host simply due to the fact that they want to get exclusive access to those VM files that are running uh, those virtual machine workloads and to have the most immediate effect possible as they start rolling through this encryption process. How do you get all of the virtual machines running on a VMware ESXi host? And that is using the command vim-cmd. And you can simply run the slash get all VMs uh, command, and it allows you to see all of the virtual machines that are running on this particular host. Now, the thing that we want to really key in on is this VM ID. Using the VM ID, we can essentially use that ID number to say, I want to power down that virtual machine. Test VM1 is VM ID number 17. So we can use that command to essentially uh, power off this virtual machine. Let me paste this command in. So it's another VIM command, VIM CMD, and we're using the VM service slash power dot off, and then you feed in the VM ID. What happens when we do this? Well, let's try this out powering off VM. If we go back to our VM inventory or vSphere inventory, we're going to see after a couple of refreshes that test VM one has indeed been powered off. So, wow, something's going on at this point. Next up, we're going to generate a random key file that's going to be used for the encryption process. And let me show you what that command is. Again, a built-in command in VMware ESXi. It's an open SSL random base 64, and we're saying 1,024 characters. We're going to output it into a key.bin file. So if I run this command, 
and I refresh from the GUI, we see that we have our key.bin file. If we take a look at that key.bin file, we can actually see what's in there. It looks very much akin to a public key or a certificate file. So now we have the encryption key that we're going to use to perform the encryption process. Now let's actually perform the encryption process. What are we two, three commands in? And we're already able to start encrypting data. Yes, we're already to that point. What command do we use to start the encryption process? What's well, actually another built-in command, the OpenSSL encrypt or ENC with several parameters. One thing we're going to target for the purposes of this demonstration, the file is simply the test VM1 VMDK file. So we're saying that's the source. Now we're going to output that as test VM1 VMDK bad day because as an administrator if you see the results of this you most certainly will have a bad day we're going to be passing in the key file that's going to be used for the encryption process so what does this look like if we run that command very quick if we go back out and refresh our uh, virtual machine folder what we're going to see is that we have the vmdk bad day file that has now been created I didn't remove the real VMDK, but what we're going to do is we are going to delete this file because the attacker, they're going to encrypt the data and delete that source uh, file of that encryption as soon as they're done with that encryption process because that essentially takes away your ability to get to that legitimate uh, ESXi file for your virtual machine. So here we go. We've deleted it. At this point, what happens if we try to power on the VM? Well, if we go back out to vSphere inventory, the machine still looks okay in inventory, but what happens when we try to power it on? We're gonna get an operation failed. Uh, the power on virtual machine task is complaining that, hey, I no longer have a test VM1.vmdk file. Is this file that we created truly encrypted? Can we go back out and simply rename this to a VMDK file proper? Well, let's take off the bad day extension. So now we have the test VM1.vmdk file. Let's see if that works better. We should be able to find the file. So let's refresh real quick and let's try to power on the virtual machine. Again, we get an operation failed and the message has changed. Notice that it's not saying I can't find the file. It's literally saying the file specified is not a virtual disk. So truly we have changed the contents of this file. We have truly encrypted this VMDK file to a format that vSphere can no longer work with. So an interesting thought is, can we reverse our changes? We have our encryption key. So let's see if we can actually reverse those changes and the encryption that we performed on that file. I have renamed the file back to the bad day extension. Uh, so we have our encrypted VMDK. However, we're going to perform another OpenSSL command, the same command, OpenSSL ENC, However, we are using the dash D for decryption and we're simply reversing the order. So we're saying we want to take that bad day file and we're going to output that file as test one VM or test VM one dot VMDK. And we're going to use that same key file. Okay, so the command ran successfully. If we go back out, we can refresh the directory structure. And what do we see? We've got a test one or test VM one dot VMDK. Now, can we go back out and power on the virtual machine? Let's take a look. We still see the powered off test VM one. We had just received two error messages due to the file, due to the encryption. So can we power it on? Let's go back through this power on process and the virtual machine powers on. So we have effectively reversed that encryption process that we use with the OpenSSL 
uh, ENC command to decrypt passing in that key file. So guys, what do you think about VMware ESXi ransomware? We literally had to run only three, four commands to go through this full life cycle of encrypting virtual machine files. Now, VMware ESXi is a tremendously secure platform. I think VMware does a great job of securing ESXi, letting us know about security vulnerabilities as those come about and as they happen. However, like any business critical system, there are commands that obviously you would not want an attacker to have access to, let alone a user uh, for that matter. So proper security for your vSphere environment is absolutely crucial. Well guys, I'm Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, keep on labbing, keep on learning, stay safe out there, always be thinking about security. And I hope to see you guys soon.